Hey guys, I'm Alex from Zaxworks, and in this tutorial, we'll learn how to create a 3D crown instead of Adobe After Effects using 3D Invigorator Pro. Now, Invigorator is known as the king of flying logo animations, and that isn't a bad thing because a lot of people need to make their title or logo fly around, right? However, Invigorator is also capable of a lot more than that. So to show that today, we'll learn how to create a 3D crown. I'll show you two different ways that each have their own purpose. Be sure to download the resource files in a link below this video and follow along. All right, so the first way we'll take a look at is by making the crown by using a material with an alpha channel. Now note that ping files have alpha channels, but JPEG or target files do not. So we need a ping file. And boom, we got that right here. We have our crown as a ping file that has transparency where the crown is not. All right, good. So now we can go into After Effects. We can create a new composition just from scratch. Make sure it's 1280 by 1920 by 1080. Click OK, and we're good to go. Now we'll create a solid layer. That should be very familiar to everyone. Make sure it's the same size as your comp. Make sure it's not the same color as your comp. So blue is good because it's black. Click OK. And then we'll come over to our effect and type uh, Invigorator to find our Invigorator plugin, drag it onto our comp, and we're good to go. Good. Now, we can go ahead and right away, we're going to make a primitive. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to make a cylinder, and I'll show you why. Okay, so we have a cylinder right now, and notice this is sort of the circle of a crown, right? So we're going to map this crown picture around our cylinder. So we'll jump into the setup window, and we have our cylinder right here. And what we're going to do immediately is bring our picture in. So we'll do that by clicking on this little thumbnail right here to bring up our image loader. We'll then select our crown.png, click open, and we have our crown. Next, we'll hold down the option key on our keyboard to link our material to our object, drag it onto our object, let go, and now you see that this red box and this red box are both highlighted, which means they are linked. Okay, so now, so far, so good. We see our crown is on our object, except you see all of this gray area. Well, that's because we have base color turned on. Turn that off, gray area goes away. Awesome. Next part, we see we have the top and the bottom of our crown still showing. We, we don't want that, right? So we'll go over to object controls, turn off top, turn off bottom, and boom, just like that, we have our crown ready to go. So now we can change a couple little things, like we can change the scale of it, uh, we could say non-repeating, I mean no tiling, we could change the position of it, make it taller or shorter, but nothing too much needs to actually happen. Maybe just a little scale down, a little push down, and we're good to go. And then make sure I have my, I have no motion blur, I don't want that. I want my ray tracer renderer selected, good, anti-aliasing is fine. Click render test, and we can see we have a nice object. We can zoom in, and we can see we have our crown. Notice, however, it doesn't look quite as great because there's no depth, right? This is just a single pixel all the way around, and we get our crown right away, and it is in 3D space, but it doesn't look quite as good. Okay, so first of all, to make it look a little better, let's go ahead and add some lighting pretty quickly. We'll go over to our lighting workspace, we'll find our lighting rigs, and we'll take our side lights and drag that in. First of all, whoops, before we do that, select our light set one and then drag our side lights. Okay, click replace, and now it just makes it look a little more realistic. And when I click OK, we're back in After Effects, and we see we have our 3D crown. That was fast, right? Super fast, I get it. So that's one way to do it. Applying material maps with an alpha channel onto objects is a great way to get 3D objects right away. So you can apply the same exact idea to a square, to another different type of object, and this will get you cool results right away, okay? However, that's the part one way to do it. The second part is to actually import the entire Illustrator file, because it is a vector file. If I come over to my Illustrator right here, I can note it that I have um, this entire drawing as a Illustrator file. It's vectors. So if I click, I can move these points around. I don't want to do that. I'll click Undo. But I notice I do have this .ai file. Okay, make sure when you save this guy, you don't have compression turn on. Turn compression off. All right, come into After Effects. Go back into our setup window. We'll turn object primitive one off. Actually, let's just go ahead and delete it for now. I will then come up to object set one. Make sure that's selected. Go up to object, import, illustrator file. Boom, we'll find our illustrator file. We'll click on import and our imported object has now come in. So if I zoom out, we notice we have a straight crown, right? Now we wanna 
put it into that 3D shape, that circular 3D shape. How do we do that? Well, I'm going to go ahead and use warping for this. And the way to use warping is we click OK to go back to the After Effects. And we know we have a very straight looking plank. All right. We'll come over to Warps, click on Warp 1, and then Apply to Object Set. We'll select that to Object 1, Object Set 1, because that is the object set we're using, right? However, we'll let it render real quick. And we see that it is being bent 25 degrees or so forward, right? So we want to go the other way. So we're actually going to do negative 100. And you'll see right away the object is now put back in the backwards Z direction. Perfect, all right? However, now we see our lines are going out. Well, that's because if I zoom up a little bit here, or scroll up, sorry, uh, we see this, this yellow area. Well, that is the warp limits. That is the limit of how much warp is allowed. And that is this area right here. So as soon as we start increasing this, notice we'll see our um, crown fold over. So I keep going, going, going until it's fully met. Let me release and keep dragging little dragging boom good perfect however one of the final steps is is that we can see we have this seam right here we don't want the seam and that's because negative 100 is actually having the bevels touch each other but there's still some space in between the bevels so all we have to do is do negative 101 and boom that will seam that up right away nice and smooth and here we go now look at our crown right before it was a little thin didn't look as realistic but now we have some depth and thickness that makes it look like real metal looks looks a lot better right we'll go into our setup window and let's make it look even better okay so one of the things i want to do is i want to add a reflection map to our crown to make it look shiny so what i'll do is i'll select our objects hold down the shift key to select both objects go to materials and then i will double click on our material right here to load it in I'll click no, I don't want this material anymore. And then I'm going to come down to reflectivity, select this little thumbnail right here, and find our reflection map. This is also in the resource files, okay? Click open, and now turn our reflectivity up to something like 20 or so. And now that gives us some nice reflectivity. Let me take my tumble tool, and we can see reflections moving through our object, right? Nice and cool. Okay, other things is I want to take my sharpness way up, I want to take my brightness way up for my specular just to give it a little more shininess a little more high brightness let's do that and that boom good to go all right so now we have that let's go ahead and click okay good and we can see the drastic difference in our object right let's zoom out a little bit and we can see our object looks so much better now look how much better that guy looks cool awesome right okay one last thing sorry go back into the setup window and we're going to select our objects again click on this little guy we can do the exact same thing go over to our object controls and now we're going to give it a little bit different bevel so let's give it a little more thickness nothing too crazy maybe just like 10 or so let's just keep increasing that good that looks good and then we'll give it a bevel we'll select bevels let's give it a small round edges small Good. And the last thing we're going to do is we're actually going to decrease the choke. And that's so that we can actually see more of these lines right here. This will give us more space between the lines. Perfect. And now when I click OK, my bevel is going to look a little different. It's going to look a little more thick. I'm going to get more space in between these guys right here. Okay, and there you go. Look at that. Now we have a full crown in 3D space ready to go. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. If you have any other questions, you can email us at support at zaxworks.com. Otherwise, I'm Alex, and I'll see you next time.